And our final speaker for this afternoon's session is Simon Baines from the University of Manchester, uh, speaking about a journey of discovery investigating student publishing at the University of Manchester. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Um, I think this is the last breakout session of the conference. Hopefully it's not the least. Um, and my title, The Journey of Discovery, is, is meaningful in the sense that, that where we started uh, is not where we started from and expected to go wasn't quite the journey we took. So I hope it's, it's revealing and I hope those of you interested in this subject will, will learn from our experiences. Um, I'm also going to talk about open access a lot because it's important to me and because I promised Lorcan and Danny I'd big their panel session up uh, after this talk. So, so I'll, I'll, I'll keep talking about that as well. So you'll all have heard already and you'll all know as well how much academic libraries are now part of the scholarly communications landscape, uh, how much we're now doing to, to support our colleagues in publishing. Uh, and in the UK in particular, we've had very big, significant national policy drivers which have uh, injected urgency into what at times was feeling like a very slow journey towards open access scholarly publishing. Um, I wasn't able to be here yesterday, but there might have been references perhaps in, in John Cox's paper about libraries and research skills. There may have been a reference to Manchester. I know John cited us in a, a paper he wrote recently. Um, because we've done, we did a lot of thinking to prepare the ground for libraries doing new things, including supporting uh, research in new ways and supporting scholarly communications. And in 2012, uh, abandoned our subject librarian structure entirely and moved to a new one. Uh, and since that time, we've been able to, to grow uh, a team of specialised uh, research support librarians. And I now have a team of seven people devoted entirely to scholarly communication support at Manchester. Uh, and much of their time, too much of their time actually, is, is taken up with, with policy compliance issues. Um, but this also provides us with a team of, of experts and a focus for thinking about other things to do with scholarly publishing and what libraries might do to support it. Okay. Um, the other message I want to repeat as I, I go through this presentation is the importance we attach and we all should attach to ensuring the work we do aligns very closely with our institutional missions and our institutional strategies. So everything we try to do at Manchester University Library, we look to see whether it links directly to the university strategy. So the top level strategy, Manchester 2020, you see an image there, uh, and then there's a research strategy that underpins that. So we try and join the dots, you know, anything we're thinking of doing, does it relate to what the university is trying to do strategically? Um, and of course, every university says it's going to commit to excellent research with impact, and therefore, what can we do to help with that? But once you get into the detail, it starts to get a little bit more interesting, and that, and that informed some decisions we took as we thought about student publishing. Manchester has a very strong commitment to open access. Um, I like to think that's partly because I bang on about it all the time. But we do have uh, an enlightened senior management. We have a, a, a pro-vice chancellor who's very committed to open access. We have an institution that understands that open access will help further their, their institutional objectives. Um, and that's made our lives easier because advocacy is less of an effort. But what's interesting is that the relationship between open access and the wider research strategy um, it doesn't necessarily follow that, that open access means, therefore, the university would like to see new journals, they'd like to see student publishing, they'd like to see uh, uh, the sorts of initiatives we were looking at. And we began to unpick that as we went through our work over the last couple of years. And if we look at the teaching and learning goal, um, this also commits, uh, makes a commitment around research skills. Um, it's important for taught students if they're, if they're intending making a transition to a, an academic career, but also we think of it in terms of what makes a Manchester graduate an asset to an employer beyond simply the, the subject knowledge they gain uh, as a student at Manchester. It's also very important to us as a research intensive institution that we show how it's valuable to potential students, that being at an institution like ours has advantages. So if you look at the, the UK National Student Survey results, the, the, the research intensive universities known as the Russell Group often don't do very well in those surveys. And now we have the arrival in, in the UK of the Teaching Excellence Framework, which is going to start to measure teaching quality in the same way as research quality. Uh, and there's no sense in which research universities can simply ex expect students to feel privileged because they're rubbing shoulders with high profile research researchers. We've got to show how it benefits them directly. 
I don't know how well you'll be able to read this image, but this is um, an example of a national uh, undergraduate award scheme which, which Manchester encourages students to enter, um, and, and, this, and our students have seen some success in this. So this is about uh, encouraging our undergraduates to do research and, and to show how good their research is even at that level. Uh, so we started within this context to think about the value of expanding the services we offered around scholarly communications to taught students. Uh, and to investigate their appetite for learning how to publish. We thought there were three possible benefits here. It would introduce them to an essential academic skill. It would provide very visible evidence of their written communication skills to be added to a, to a CV, to lit, a link to a LinkedIn profile for potential employers. And of course, it would educate them about the changing scholarly communications landscape, the importance of open access, and why they should be thinking about making their research available openly. And Manchester has a programme called Learning Through Research, which drives these sorts of ideas across the institution. So we worked with colleagues responsible for that as we did our thinking. And that Learning Through Research initiative fits within a wider framework, which seeks to define what's called the Manchester Advantage, which is our way at the university of trying to develop graduates who have got real skills and experience beyond their area of study in a number of ways. You see some examples there on the slide. And the library's already embedded in this through, through our award-winning My Learning Essentials programme. I'm not allowed to say that without using the phrase award-winning. Um, but we've, we've done very well with this. Uh, and it's a, it's a mixed combination of face-to-face -face and online uh, skills provision, which extends beyond information literacy to other sorts of academic skills. Uh, and we're also conscious that the link between teaching and research is formally defined in the teaching excellence framework. Um, it's part of the learning environment criteria. And we see the library as sitting very nicely as a place to help uh, further the university's thinking in this as, as we support both uh, learning and, res and research equally. And then the final bit of uh, context to here is, is our, our partner in our work, the University Press. So the library... Um, can't think about whether or not it should do publishing and set up publishing services without bearing in mind that the university already does publishing. We have an established, very well established university press. So many universities that are starting new initiatives, quite often in the library, setting up new, new journals, academic journals or student journals, do so without an existing press. And, that, and so we have advantages and disadvantages. We have the benefit of an enormous amount of publishing expertise in the university already, but we can't simply start with a blank slate. And we, and we began to discover some real issues around uh, the, the, the university press's mission and, and whether or not that, that aligned with ours. But we were keen to work together at a strategic level and to be asked to work together at a strategic level. So we wanted to do this. The question was how... And the catalyst for it was um, the creation of a new centre at Manchester. There was a lot of um, thinking done by some very intelligent senior people, but the best they could come up with was Cheryl as an acronym for this centre, and it's stuck. Um, so we have the uh, Centre for Higher Education, Research, Innovation and Learning, uh, which is trying to help the university do more about researching its pedagogy, researching how it does teaching and learning to help us do better in that area. And they've been releasing funding on an annual basis internally for, for people to do research work around this. So we successfully bid for grants in 2015 and 2016, uh, working with the, the University Press as a partner, to look at the issue of student publishing, particularly undergraduate student publishing, but not entirely, uh, and what we might do uh, and what we might need to find out about. So the first project um, did a lot of market research. We, we engaged with students at all levels. We ran workshops like the, the, the photos you see here to, to sh for students to share what they were doing, for academics to share what they were doing, and, and to, to get a sense of the levels of interest. Um, and we found a lot of interest, actually, but we found it in pockets, um, so it wasn't comprehensive across the university. And we also began to surface some significant issues around time commitment to do this sort of thing properly, about sustainability of something that needed to keep going well beyond the life cycle of, of particular students at the university. And we began to understand the costs, um, and that began to make us realise the scale of any potential commitment. As luck would have it, our project funding coincided with interest in the uh, university's medical school in setting up an undergraduate student journal. And we worked with the school for this uh, for two years to bring it to fruition. So the Manchester Medical Journal launched relatively recently, I think about six months ago. 
and it's an excellent initiative and there's some really committed students and academics behind it and some innovative thinking about peer review and how peer review can work in the context of having um, undergraduates running a journal. Um, and it's, it's worked well, um, but it's taught us some important lessons. It, it's really hard to do this well. Uh, the costs are high. The commitment required of library staff, publishing, publishing staff, academics and students is significant. And there's a real challenge to sustain it because you can't set up a journal on the basis it'll run for a couple of years before some students graduate. You've got to think about the sustainability plan for it after that. Is that me? Do I, have I, should I finish? <laughs> I keep talking. Um, okay. So after year one of our project, we took stock. We weren't convinced that the student publishing service was sustainable. We weren't persuaded there was sufficient demand in the university. But what was clear was students were interested in learning more about publishing and that focusing on skills delivery was more achievable and likely to benefit a larger number of people. So in year two, our main objective was to create and deliver publishing training resources. So we've released three online modules now, how to get published, peer review, and editing a journal. And we've used the library's existing skills and brand and placed them into a larger training resource called My Research Essentials, which is a companion to our award-winning My Learning Essentials. And so in the second year of our, our work, it became clearer that skills provision is the best use of resources for us at the moment. There's clearly interest in some areas of the, of the university um, in publishing, but we've also heard very firmly from one of our faculties that they did not support the notion of cre the creation of new student journals. Uh, they felt they could be a distraction uh, for research students who ought to be spending their time getting into the inverted commas, real journals. And of course, there's some cultural issues around that and around how we're trying to change how academic publishing is done. But nevertheless, these are real issues at the moment. Um, so we didn't want to create a, a, a central service where that wasn't clear we had strategic support and where we knew the costs were significant. One journal we have created jointly with the Manchester University Press is, a, is an academic scholarly journal, uh, an open access title called the James Baldwin Review about the American poet and social critic. And the editor of that journal is Dr. Doug Field, and Doug worked with us to be part of one of our online training modules. So that's, that's Doug talking uh, about the editorial process on the slide there. We've made sure we've thought about this um, more broadly. We've thought about what our peers are doing. We've brought people together to discuss the issues. Um, at the beginning of this year, we brought uh, 17 institutions across the UK together at Manchester to share what we've been doing and learning lessons from each other. And my op opinion, um, which perhaps is a provocative one, is that some of the new ventures we're seeing in libraries to set up new ju uh, student journals are well-meaning, but they fall short. Uh, it's not clear to me that they directly support their university missions, uh, and they certainly don't convince me that they're properly financially sustainable over the long term that you would need to commit to, to a scholarly publishing enterprise. They do feel very much like one-man bands in some, er in some institutions. So we've done two years of thinking on this. We've um, run two projects, uh, each over 12 months. And this is where we've got to. So there's one student journal up and running, which we hope is largely self-sustaining now. Uh, although I do think some question marks hang over it. Uh, this year, we're not, we haven't bid for more funding to do another project. Instead, we're focusing on, on embedding the training materials uh, and then monitoring how well they're used. Uh, we're also setting up a discussion forum for, for students who are doing publishing so they can share their experiences of how it's going and what works for them uh, and try and think about that learning about research part of what we're trying to do. Uh, what was really pleasing was that last year we inspired um, academic colleagues to think more about this. So we, we spoke in particular to uh, colleagues in our religions and theology department and they've, they've been thinking for a long time about how they get their students to disseminate their work more widely and to reach uh, non-academic audiences because religious literacy is such a, an important topic at, at the moment, as, as I'm sure we all appreciate. Um, and so the ideas I discussed with them prompted them to develop a project called Students in Public. And what they're looking at is creating uh, learning materials to help students think more widely about bringing their knowledge to the, to the wider world. And they will build on, on the work we've done in the library and with the press over the coming year. And we'll look at where that gets to. 
um, and we'll think about how we link in with that when that project's finished. So that's been one of the most tangible benefits for me, is, is inspiring our academic colleagues to think about this a bit differently as well. So I think in, in summary, I would say that, that this, as I said at the start, this didn't take me quite where I thought it would. I thought we would end up with a, a, a student publishing service. I thought we'd perhaps end up with three or four student titles. Uh, we haven't. We've ended up thinking much more about the skills development um, and then allowing them and our, and our academic colleagues the freedom of thinking about where they take those skills and where they choose to publish. I think the, the, um, the sense that the university should be doing more publishing itself, the notion that we, we wrest control from some of the commercial publishers, I think is still an important one. Uh, but many of our academic colleagues aren't quite there yet, so we've got to go along the journey with them and help them understand how the scholarly landscape is, is changing and seek to influence their own thinking about how valuable it would be to, for, for academia to take control more of its published, its published research output. Uh, this is now driving thinking for our next strategy. So the library's new strategy at Manchester will launch in 2018. And thinking about publishing services and how we as a library um, provide uh, a publishing strategy support, I suppose, to our academic colleagues um, is going to be an important part of our, our strategy um, from next year onwards. And we're certainly seeing a need for that. We're, we're seeing too much of um, academics and, and their students publishing in the places they've always published, not really thinking about where the best place to, to put it would be, still not thinking enough about the importance of openness um, and, and moving publishing forward in a different way. So we'll continue to influence. And I'll say open access again, because I said I'd say it lots of times. Um, but that comes, that's the end of that for now. Uh, so thank you very much. And of course, I'm very happy to take any questions about any of those things uh, at the, during the Q&A. Thank you. <clears throat> Mm. Um, thanks to you.